Why don't we give our graduates one more round of applause as they continue to come in. everyone. Welcome to our commencement ceremony. I hereby declare the 2019 graduate commencement ceremony convened. Please stand and join our vocalist, Manny James Sorrell, in the singing of America the Beautiful. I can sing, but <laughs> Manny, hello, is he here? Hey, Manny, is this you? He's here. skies for and waves of rain for purple mountains majesty but the fruited fruited plain yes America America, no. God shed his grace on thee, thee, thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shine. For spacious skies, for ever ways, ever ways of grain, for purple mountains, majesty, above the fruited, fruited plain. America, no. 
America, God shed his grace on the earth and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea from sea to shining sea from sea to shining Now I'm, ah, uh, there we go. Was that not worth the wait? Oh, come on, you can give them a, a round of applause. There we go. Excellent, excellent. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm pleased to introduce our dean for our graduate school, Dean Manohar Singh. Very good afternoon to you all. Thank you for the response, and I feel more elated than when I was seeing the rehearsals and the traffic in the morning. This is a fantastic day. What a beautiful moment of pride and joy. What a great occasion to share with your loved ones, and what a milestone to achieve and what a runway to take off from for you to fly into the high skies of your life ahead. Let me begin with some congratulations. First, congratulations on conquering many sleepless nights and nerve-wracking exams, skipped holidays, missed homes, weeks of empty fridges and refrigerators, and months, maybe if you are like me, years of empty bank accounts. It may have been hard at the time, but those challenges made you stronger, ready to fight the battles not just for yourself, but for all those who are unable to be where you are. Congratulations on becoming capable of paying it forward, of enabling and of empowering those less fortunate to realize their dreams. We at Southern consider it a privilege to be able to join you in this celebration we feel especially grateful. As a dean, I am really humbled that I get this special privilege to address you all as our graduates, as your mentors, teachers, research supervisors. Our faculty colleagues are very proud of your achievements <coughs> and look forward to many years of celebration, your success, and your accomplishments well beyond today's ceremonies. When the word actually receives the gift of your love and kindness, of your creativity and knowledge, of your care and compassion, and of your professionalism and work ethic. Let's take this opportunity to recognize our faculty's dedication and commitment to your success. <laughs> Beyond the classroom, 
There are several very devoted and committed colleagues at Southern, including my fellow deans, our president and his cabinet, as well as faculty senate representatives who work continuously, tirelessly to ensure that as a team, we support you and bring to you the best of the education in the entire world and beyond. We commit to providing you with an academic and professional atmosphere that nurtures creativity, entrepreneurship, compassion, and a desire to serve. We are very intentional at Southern in keeping a sharp focus on affordability, accessibility, inclusivity, and community service as defining characteristics of the education we offer. While our faculty expertise matches that of any world-class institution, mind you, our passion surpasses all. Our professional staff has an exemplary dedication to promoting student success, that is you. Our alumni, as successful professionals and thought leaders, make us proud and keep us motivated and inspired to do our best and do it better next time to make our best better than what it was previously. Today's celebration of your success is absolutely, no doubt, result of your hard work and your sincerity to your goal. Let's remember, though, it rests on foundations laid by all the kindness, love, support, mentorship that you received outside of the classroom as well, at home, in your neighborhoods, and beyond. Please take a moment. Take a moment to turn around at, to your loved ones and or think about what you will say when you give them a call after the ceremony. That's your way of paying them your gratitude and thanks. And consider all those sacrifices, all their unconditional support, how they were the ones who actually made it hard to be away from home to begin with the love. Those who sent you care packages and took your emotional phone calls, and the ones who have taken care of you from the very beginning to the ones who came into your life at a later stage. To the mothers, fathers, grandparents, siblings, spouses, aunts, uncles, friends, children, and partners. Thank you all. You are the foundation of our students' success, and we thank you for playing an equally large and significant role in their achievement. So, here is to that achievement. Know that this day is so much more about receiving a diploma. It's about your ability to define what success means to you and how you will choose to shape your future in order to achieve the success that you define for yourself. I want you to remember, please, that while earning this degree has been your primary objective for a few years, remember life is bigger than the sum of your work hours and the diplomas we hold. It is much bigger. Be passionate, but do not let your career limit your living. 
Career is an instrument by which you can implement positive change in the world, but let that not become an end in itself. Your work will become your legacy for sure, but it should not define you. And whoever it is that you are beyond your work, be proud of that person and always hold your head high. Seize your passion, follow your creative instinct, make sure to do something every day to further your intellectual, physical, and spiritual growth. No matter what that something is, define it for yourself and pursue it with tenacity and grit. You remember though, that easy should not be your goal. Easy paths are not the ones that lead to the change you desire and we all need. Do not be afraid to follow the paths that seem difficult or insurmountable because it's the law of nature. We must fail to truly succeed. We must make mistakes to truly learn. Just do not be afraid to fail. Rather, learn from the failures. Before we proceed for the day, I will want to leave you with three thoughts. One, pursue a righteous, virtuous, and honest living, and I guarantee you, you will lead a life that is fearless, joyful, and full of love. Second, stay humble. Stay humble in your successes and remember the millions of factors that came together and led you to where you are now. Be proud of your accomplishments, but be even more grateful. Always remember the people and places in your life that brought you here to your successes. Finally, share your blessings. You're blessed, share it, pay it forward. Create a word of empowerment alongside your own achievements where you enable others to realize their worth and help them lead a life that we all seek, a life of dignity. Sow the seeds of good deeds for all of the humanity to harvest. Give the word the gift of your honesty, your compassion, your open-mindedness, your understanding, empathy, and service. And in return, it's my firm belief that you will receive from the word the respect, the trust, the love, and recognition that you deserve. Thank you. It is my great privilege to introduce the Chief Academic Officer of Southern Connecticut State University, Dr. Robert Present. Dr. Present provides the leadership, advocacy, and tireless support for all of our academic leaders on campus, including our deans, department chairs, and faculty members. He truly exemplifies the Southern's mission of pursuing excellence fostering leadership, and empowering communities. And I'm honored to work alongside this visionary leader who brings such positive energy and a student-centered approach to every task. Please join me in providing a very warm welcome to Dr. Robert Prezant. Thank you, Dean Singh, for the words that uh, 
I wrote. No, I didn't. <laughs> At this time, it gives me great pleasure. Uh, turned it to my, uh, let me start that again on the right page. On behalf of Southern Connecticut State University's Office of Academic Affairs to our students, congratulations. As Southern celebrates 125 years as an institution of higher learning, we recognize that education and how we educate changes with time. These changes are embedded in the graduate degrees you'll receive today, and we hope these changes are embedded in how you'll continue to learn and how you will share what you've learned. These changes prepared you for the challenges of today and tomorrow and prepared you for the unexpected. And there's only one thing we could actually promise you. We could absolutely assure you of one major thing. The unexpected is to be expected. Change happens. And for those of you monitoring Sheldon Cooper, some of you, Big Bang, he finally, even Sheldon, finally understood that change is inevitable. But sudden changes can represent sudden opportunities, and that's where your preparation will make a difference. Southern has a rich history of preparing our students for change. As a biologist myself, we see evolutionary success in part through accidents of DNA that better adapt organisms for changing environments. Humans have an edge over most other species in being able to measure and predict changing environments. And I can assure you, we are in the midst of a serious global environmental change. This change will mandate that we purposefully adapt on every front. All of your graduate degrees that you'll receive today, all of your graduate degrees, no matter what discipline, will be needed to help us be better prepared for our changing world. Across disciplines, we hope Southern has prepared you to embrace adaptability, to covet positive change, to understand the appropriate role of technology in society, and to recognize that often unspoken imperative for public service, to lend a hand where and when needed with your graduate degree and all it represents woven into your fabric, you will become part of critical discussions that focus on the most important issues we face. Issues that include deep divisions in our country, issues promoted by a blurring of fact and fiction. Your education has given you the responsibility to help erase the disturbing the disturbing recent trends that promote tribalism. The education behind your degrees gives you a moral high ground that must be shared. We need you to model hard work, ideas, and creativity that has been defined by your graduate work. Those are the qualities that make it easy for all of us to celebrate this life-changing moment with you. And finally, a set of data. A set of data that I think will help put this celebration in perspective. Your advanced post-baccalaureate degree places you in a group representing less than 12% of the entire country. For those of you about to be conferred with a doctorate, we're looking at under 3%. Those numbers tell a lot about who you are. And those of us sharing this event with you, your families, faculty, mentors, advisors, friends, all revel in all that you have accomplished. So we're counting on you. We're counting on you to challenge yourself to create a better future for all of us. We need you to use your education, your insatiable appetite for new knowledge, and your thirst for fairness to move our community and our country forward. We expect that no matter what path taking, you will always be a model of the social justice that Southern works so hard to exemplify. And regarding that path before you, that path will entail deep reflection, deep contemplation of a very serious manner, followed by appropriate and sometimes life-changing actions. 
you're going to have to start down that path in a very serious way, but not today. That can wait till tomorrow. For today, focus on the moment. Thank your supportive faculty and family and friends. Reward yourself and celebrate. Congratulations. I mentioned to you that it's a special day for me as the Dean of the Graduate School. I, I get to come to the podium every five minutes <laughs> and see the smiling, proud faces of you and your loved ones. It's now my great pleasure to introduce our esteemed colleagues and members of the Platform Party. I ask that each member please stand as your name is called and that we please withhold our applause until all introductions have been made. I start with our president, Joe Bartolino, president of the Southern Connecticut State University, Robert Prezant, provost and vice president of academic affairs, Tracy Tyree, vice president for student affairs, Michael Kingan, vice president for institutional advancement, Dennis Ryman, vice president technology and chief information officer, Eileen Crawford, Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs, Charisi Dessas, Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management, Jules Tetro, Associate Vice President and Dean of Student Affairs, Jermaine Wright, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs, Colleen Bielitz, Associate Vice President for Strategic Initiatives and Outreach, Judith Memvakidis, <coughs> Associate Vice President for Alumni and Donor Engagement. Sandra Bulmer, Dean of the School of Health and Human Services. Alan Dernan, Dean of School of Business. Stephen Hagedis, Dean of School of Education. Bruce Koch, Dean of School of Arts and Sciences. Maria Diamantes, President of Faculty Senate and our Mace Bearer. Cynthia O'Sullivan, Vice Chair of the Graduate Council and Commencement Marshal. Robin Kanafik, Administrative Faculty Senate Representative and Banner Bearer. Fleece Gray Camp, Representative for the Connecticut Board of Regents. Michael Taylor, Chief Executive Officer, Cornell Scott Hill Health Center. Lisa Galvin, Director of Graduate Admissions and our Platform Marshal, Clara Ogba, Director of Library Services, Catherine Jervis, Ace Fellow, Class of 2018-19, Manny James Sorrells and Candice Nade, our vocalists for today. Mark Cuss, Professor of Music, and Peter Greco, our accompanists today. And special thanks to our faculty delegation seated in the audience and behind the platform. Let's please give them a round of applause. And now I bring to you greetings and congratulations on behalf of New Haven Mayor, the Honorable Tony Hart. The mayor was unfortunately called away on official business, and she's unable to join us this afternoon. Mayor Harp has been a great friend and an advocate for Southern Connecticut State University. She wishes each of you heartfelt congratulations on achieving this milestone and tremendous professional success that lies ahead. We are hoping that the successes will impact, and we know they will impact New Haven, Connecticut, and the entire world. Our she conveys her best wishes to each of you and all the friends, family, members of your community, your mentors, and loved ones who have supported you throughout your endeavors. Enjoy this moment. 
That was a message from New Haven Mayor. I now have the privilege to introduce our esteemed colleague from the Connecticut Board of Regents, Ms. Fleece Gray Camp. Ms. Gray Camp was appointed by the Governor Malloy at that time to the Connecticut Board of Regents in August 2017 and serves as member of the Board of Finance and Infrastructure Committee at this time. As a legal executive with expertise in US and international commercial law, for Fortune 500 industrial, technology, and consumer product companies, she has been recognized internationally for her legal and business acumen and leadership skills, as well as for mentoring individuals from all walks of life. In 2015, the Connecticut Women's Education and Legal Fund honored Ms. Graycamp for making a difference in the lives of Connecticut residents. She has served on various nonprofit and for-profit boards, including as trustee for Life on Aurora Foundations for Women and Girls in Greater Hartford. That's a nonprofit organization, and she co-founded that 17 years ago with several accomplished women leaders alongside. Among her current membership, she serves on the board of trustees for the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame. Ms. Graycamp has lifelong commitment to learning, and we are honored to have her support and attendance here this evening. Please join me in a very warm welcome for Ms. Fleece Graycamp. There's not much that I would say that hasn't already been said. And thank you, Dr. Singh, for having me to need to be adaptable with my own comments because he said all the good stuff. But I would like to start by saying thank you on behalf of myself and on behalf of each of my fellow regents. And it's a great privilege to stand here to congratulate you for what is this part of your educational journey. Class of 2019, you, the people in this room who support you, and the many more who are here in spirit. I say that the journey is commencing and we're appreciating it thus far, because as Dr. Singh has mentioned, it's just beginning. With each day, whether in the classroom or otherwise, we have the opportunity, as I tell my teams, to get smarter. And getting smarter isn't always what we find in a book. It's life lessons. So for myself, I try to learn at least six new things a day. One of the things I learned today was not about law, not about business, there was that as well, but in the quest to be an interesting person that reflects the energy of life and draws good things to you, I like to learn silly facts, like why cats are afraid of cucumbers. Anyone else but me know why cats are afraid of cucumbers? Because they look like snakes, and cats are scared of snakes. And with that bit of trivia, I give you an example that learning doesn't always have to come with an exam or a test. Sometimes the test is just survival, like having to redo your comments on the fly because you had better words said by others. Um, and as you're doing that test, as you're living that life, just be brave and authentic and rely on the relationships and the inner strength that brought you to this room, in this place, in this moment. Live out loud and don't be fearful. Don't live in regret. Some experiments will fail, some will be smashing successes, but you won't know until you try. So with that, I'd like to thank you, not only for the privilege of, of being here to speak with you, but also for the privilege of calling some of you colleagues in future, for the privilege of you being Connecticut residents and hopefully staying Connecticut residents as we work together to make this state live to its fullest potential. You are the future of Connecticut. And I can see your faces. So where I stand, the future looks absolutely beautiful. God bless. And now, it's an honor to introduce our keynote speaker to you all. Mr. Michael Taylor.
Mr. Taylor has been in leadership roles at Colonel Scott Hill Health Center since 2010 and has served as its chief executive officer since 2012. Prior to that, he was founder and president of a healthcare consulting firm that served more than 200 community health centers nationally. He has also held leadership positions with several national accounting and healthcare consulting firms, including the Lewin Group. In addition, he was a subject expert and trainer for National Association of Community Health Centers for more than 10 years, focusing on strategic planning and operations improvement. Mr. Taylor is a creative entrepreneur who is deeply passionate about the community's health capacity to improve the quality of people's lives. His tenure at Conrad Scott Health can be best described as time of rededication to the legacy created by Cornell Scott. And with that, one of the innovation, renaissance, and growth and development. Under his guidance, the leadership team had fortified the health center's financial position, blazed a trail of care integration, quality, and patient-centeredness, renovated, expanded, and replaced existing care sites, added new services, and bolstered internal systems and infrastructure. It is projected that in the next two years, the Cornell Scott Hill Health Center will direct 700 plus staff members who serve more than 50,000 greater New Haven residents annually. Mr. Taylor earned his bachelor's degree in accounting and finance from Northeastern University in Boston and supplemented that education with coursework in healthcare management. He serves on the board of directors of Greater New Haven Chamber of Commerce, the Community Health Center Association of Connecticut, <coughs> Community Health Network of Connecticut, and National Association of Community Health Centers. Before we commence with the keynote address, I would like to request that President Bertolino join me at the podium. Thank you, Dean Singh. First, I would like to invite Michael um, to the center of the stage. This year, I have the privilege of instituting a new tradition here at Southern, the creation of the President's Medal of Distinction. This medal will be presented annually to an individual and or organization in our community that supports the needs and well-being of the community that makes the city of New Haven, Southern Connecticut region, and the state of Connecticut a better place, a better community, and recognizes an individual and or organization that is committed to, to the cause of social justice and to ensuring that individuals are treated with dignity, respect, kindness, compassion, civility, and equity. And so it is my pleasure and honor to present the first Southern Connecticut State University President Medal of Distinction to Mr. Michael Taylor and the Cornell Scott Health System. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to introduce your commencement speaker and our recipient of the Southern Connecticut State University's Presidential Medal of Distinction, Michael Taylor.
I'm sorry, Michael. Did we forget to tell you? Uh, Mom and Dad? Mock? Uh, first and foremost, congratulations. I am beyond honored and thrilled to join you today. Congratulations to all of you. I have a confession. I'm not Robert Smith of Vista Equity Partners. I'm not sure I'd even ever gain sight of $40 million. So I am certainly not in a position to offer to repay all student tuition. But I'm pleased and honored to be here nevertheless, and I hope that what I have to offer you all, at some point in your lives, you will attach some value to. So I'm pleased to hear, be here for a variety of reasons. <clears throat> Graduates, you only get to be in this position once. So what I want to encourage from all of you is a gigantic smile. <coughs> Teeth, please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Teeth. Teeth. Because I want you to sit and revel in this moment for a while. It doesn't come around again. I mean that. I want you to appreciate what you've accomplished. Feel it? Yes? <laughs> Got it? Now, I'm going to ask all of you to stand, all of the graduates. Now, graduates, I want you all to turn around and give one rousing, heartfelt round of grateful applause to your parents, family members, faculty members, friends, benefactors, and supporters. Come on. I have been around long enough to have been on both sides of where you are now, both as a graduate and as a parent, so I know what it feels like for all you parents and family members up in, in the gallery, and I'm, I'm so thrilled for you uh, because I recognize what a sacrifice this has been for you as well. Uh, okay, graduates, not good enough. Give them another round. <laughs> All of you, all of you, deserve gratitude, respect, and so much more for the encouragement, the counsel, the patience, the sacrifice, and the worry you shared over the years it took to reach the point in the lives of these graduates. What an incredible, incredible, thing you've done to give of yourself and enable this group of young people <coughs> to be young. 
to get, to get an, an education at a non Harvard and a Southern Connecticut University. My second reason for being so honored to be present today is to join you because I want to give you graduates gifts, not $40 million gifts, gifts nevertheless. And you decide over the course of time how valuable they are. These are gifts that have taken me 40 plus years to learn and appreciate. And there are three of them. The first thing is to find, pursue, shape, and nurture careers that feed your soul and to make you feel good and proud of what you do in life. Be clear. Careers are a marathon, not a script. They are filled with high and low points, successes and failures, accomplishments and disappointments, and times of extraordinary exhilaration, and others of mind numbing support. One nice. Financial success alone will rarely sustain you, enthuse you, or see you through many difficulties you will encounter over a long career. Choose then a career, and I use that word quite intentionally. Choose a career because you all have choices and never forget that you have choices. Choose a career where, where every day past you do an internal sense of accomplishment, satisfaction, and reward because it is those things that will sustain you. So, so figure out, out where your passion, passion lies and what's, what's important to you. Passion will fortify you as you encounter challenges and sustain you when things become difficult. Passion also makes the sense of feel exponentially more meaningful. Choose careers, ladies and gentlemen, that feed your soul. Got it? As daunting as it might seem sometimes, embrace every opportunity to experience something, anything new. A new way of viewing a situation, a new place, a new skill, someone else's perspective or experience, a new challenge, a new technology, a new degree, 
a new language, a new person, a different culture, and maybe even a new attitude. Each and every new experience, big and small, is a building block that changes you even when it's not obvious and enables you to grow into a more well-rounded person. Stay in your comfort zone only long enough to become proficient. But don't stay too long. Don't stay too long without also taking on something new, a new assignment, task, or skill that allows you to expand your perspective, experience, and your skill set. So ladies and gentlemen, stretch, stretch. Third and final gift, learn when to turn the page. Some of you might think you're all-knowing, but you're not. No one is, and I've been around long enough to know that. Life is trial and error, and error is another of those building blocks I spoke of earlier. Don't feel ashamed when you've made an error. Own it, learn from it, and most certainly, most certainly apologize for it when your error has caused someone else harm. Apologize for it when your error has called someone else harm. But dwell, don't dwell on it too long. And do make a concerted effort not to repeat it. Why? Because you need to, what? Turn the page. Turn the page. If you're a tenacious go-getter, you will toil, feel frustrated, and even suffer at times beyond what you think is either fair or that you should. Don't despair too much. Figure out how to turn the page. If you're on a path that doesn't suit you, you'll often, but not always immediately, feel it in the pit of your stomach. Ponder the situation for a while and consider what you're either doing or not doing to improve or exacerbate that situation. And then sometimes, sometimes, things are beyond your ability to positively influence their outcome. It might be time to turn the page. And today, graduates, you are all turning one big page. <laughs> to start a new chapter in your lives, I am so excited for you. So show the same love and care for others that enables you to be here today. And I'm going to restate that because I really believe it to be essential and important to life. Show the same care and love that enables you to be here today. And as you progress, stretch, stretch, and build careers that soothe and feed your souls. You will make the world a better place. My very best to each of you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Michael. That was touching, inspiring, and motivating for you as well as for us. It's now my pleasure to introduce Manny James Sorrells, who will sing The Impossible Dream by Mitch Lay and Joe Darion. Mr. Sorrells will be accompanied by Peter Greco on guitar. Mr. Sorrells is a proud recording artist on Patriarch Hustle Now label. He was born and raised right here in New Haven. He has been a singer and performer since the age of eight and established himself as a premier artist and songwriter well before his debut album, Just Being Honest, that was released in July 2014. Mr. Sorrells brings a unique and soulful sound to his music, which can also be found on his 2017 EP release, Church Street South, named after the neighborhood in which he grew up. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Manny James Sorrells and his accompanist, Peter Greco. To dream the impossible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear, bear with unbearable sorrow to run, run where the brave did not go, go to right the unrightable wrong to love, love Pure and chase from afar to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. For this is my quest. To follow that star, no matter how hopeless and no matter how far, to fight for what's right without question or pause, to be willing to march into hell. For a heavenly cause And I know If I know thee be true, true To this glorious quest Then my heart Will be peaceful and calm when I'm late to my grave, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh. and the world will be better for them that one man. man Scorned and covered with scars To try When your arms are too weary To reach The unreachable Stop
<clears throat> Thank you. Now, it's my honor and privilege as a colleague to introduce the president of the Southern Connecticut State University, Dr. Joseph Bertolino. <clears throat> Dr. Bertolino was appointed as the university's 12th president in July 2016. As an author, teacher, and scholar, Dr. Bertolino has demonstrated his exemplary leadership ability and dedicated commitment to academic excellence, social justice, and service to the greater community. As an inspiring colleague, he's kind, he's compassionate, boundlessly energetic, and has a wonderful sense of humor that spreads a smile across the entire campus. It is a pleasure to introduce him to you. Please join me in welcoming him. He will be giving the commencement charge to the class of 2019, Dr. Joseph Bertolino. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Evidently, I stand between you and your degrees. So, um, how are we feeling? Yeah. Perhaps you didn't hear me the first time. I stand between you and your degrees. Um, how are we feeling? There we go. So, there are these two twins. Well, that would be twins, wouldn't they? Okay. One was a real optimist, the other one was a real pessimist, and their parents were a little bit concerned because one was entirely too optimistic and the other one was entirely too pessimistic. So they decided to take their children to the child psychologist. They arrive at the child psychologist's office and explain the situation, and the psychologist says, I've got this, don't worry about it. So the psychologist takes the first child, the pessimist, and puts the child in a room filled with brand new toys and says, go and play with these toys. They're all yours. Closes and locks the door, says, I'll be back in an hour, and figures that will make that child more optimistic, more happy brings the pessimist down the hall, opens the door, pushes him in, closes and locks the door, and there the child, our optimist, is in a room filled with manure. And so, an hour passes, and our psychologist goes to the first child, the pessimist, opens the door, there the child is sitting there, crying, and the psychologist says, what's wrong? And the child says, well, if I play with the toys and I open them up, um, they'll break and I'll be in trouble and my parents won't love me anymore. And so he walks down the hall and he opens the door and the child, our optimist, is nowhere to be found. And he calls out the child's name several times and all of a sudden the child's head pops out of the pile of manure. I know, I know. And the psychologist says, what are you doing? And the child says, well, if there's manure in here, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> and so it is my pleasure as president of the university today to present each and every one of you with your pony because you have deserved it. I should probably just stop right there. <laughs> so this event is a chance for us to recognize and honor your work, and graduation ceremonies, for the most part, have a comforting sameness about them from institution to institution. But every school's commencement 
really is unique because of the people who come together to make this ceremony what it is. And as, as I said before, and as you heard earlier, no one knows better than those closest to you, your family and your friends, those who have helped you, those who have made sacrifices. But those of us within the Southern family who have taught you, guided you, mentored you, also have a pretty good idea of how significant this day is. So on behalf of your soon-to-be alma mater and all those who have helped you on your journey, I congratulate you. At Southern, we encourage our students to be lifelong learners. Life itself is the best teacher, of course, but if we're not open to lessons, we can't grow from them. And even though you are all students of life, sometimes that isn't enough. Your job may require you to go back to school to earn an advanced degree, or you may wish to enter a new field that requires specialized study. No matter the reason you chose to earn a graduate degree, it took courage for you to go back to school. Courage, sacrifice, and a lot of late nights. And trust me, I know. I remember because I went to graduate school for seven years part-time to get my doctoral degree. I studied on the train, early mornings, late evenings. I actually wrote, this, this, this will age me, my entire dissertation on yellow legal pads. So, so I, I know what you've been through. The phrase lifelong learning sounds nice. But the reality of it is often challenging. You may have experienced obstacles and setbacks during your time here that made you think you'd never finish that degree. But I can promise you there is light at the end of the tunnel, or more importantly, there's a pony at the end of the road. So those of us who were fortunate to hear Olympic champion Michael Phelps speak on campus in March heard his story of resilience in the face of some major setbacks. Phelps was here on this very stage as this year's speaker in the Fusco Distinguished Lecture Series, speaking before a rapt audience, this most successful and decorated Olympian of all time shared stories of his swimming career and his personal life. And just to refresh your memory, Phelps won 28 career medals, including 23 gold medals, highlighted by a world record eight gold medals at the 2008 Summer Olympics in Beijing. The closest I've gotten to a pool are floaties, but that's another story altogether. He completed his first Olympics in 2000 in Sydney at the age of 15 and retired from professional competition after winning five golds and one silver at his fifth Olympics in Rio de Janeiro in 2016. That in and of itself is astonishing. On paper, he doesn't sound like a person who encountered a whole lot of obstacles. And if you've ever saw him swim, you'd understand why. But Michael Phelps told a very different story on his night here at Southern. During a moderated conversation, he had talked about the journey that he made, the sacrifices he made to reach the top of the sports world, but also the difficult personnel challenges that confronted him along the way. Ever since he did a remarkably honest interview with Sports Illustrated in 2014, when he spoke for the first time publicly about his problem and struggle with depression, Phelps has been a prominent spokesperson for mental health awareness and support. In that interview and in his lecture here at Southern, he shared his story of some very dark days in his life when he wasn't sure he would be able to pull himself out of bed in the morning. With help, he was able to return to swimming and to find a brighter future. And he continued to tell his story and encourage others to seek help when they experienced struggles with their mental health. He said that being able to talk openly about his depression made him feel like a weight had been lifted from him. Phelps' message was a timely one. Student mental health is a challenging issue facing higher education. 
and with Southern's commitment to access, social justice, and empowering lives through higher education, we recognize the need to prioritize mental health. In Thank you for that. Probably an education counseling major. Huh? Social work. I should have known. Thank you. I love when they stick up for themselves. It's great. He actually spoke to a group of our students from the swim team before the lecture, and he told the students that living your best life is the most important thing you can do, and that includes, and I love this, if you remember nothing else, remember this, and that includes asking for help. Learning to ask for help when you need it can sometimes be difficult. But Phelps' example shows us that his ability to ask for help and receive help allowed him to achieve amazing things. So yes, resilience is important if you're going to succeed at anything as we navigate the twists and turns of life. But turning to others for support is also a critical component of being successful and being happy. Essentially, we need each other to be able to achieve great things. And one thing I love about this university, okay, we'll applaud that too, sure. You get an extra degree, thank you. And one thing I've loved about this university from the first time I set foot on campus is its engagement with the surrounding community. Reaching out to help others is part of the fabric of this university. And our relationship with Michael and Cornell Scott is just a, one example of that. Our students, our faculty, our staff are here, and they're out there volunteering their time, working in schools, in neighborhoods, in businesses, right alongside the folks who make the city and state run. So I'm proud of our Southern community because so many of us do put others first and reach our hands out to help when it is needed. You know, the world around us is changing pretty rapidly and dramatically, and often we may feel helpless or in a quandary about how we can make a meaningful contribution. The truth of the matter is, is that the rhetoric these days can be hurtful, it can be painful, it can be challenging, it can be aggravating, but it can also provide inspiration and opportunity to do something, to show up, to take action. Simply listening, being present, being engaged, being ready to act, this is a contribution in itself. Taking action, speaking out, coming to another person's aid, this is a contribution. They can be our contributions, large or small, but each one makes a difference. In other words, like Michael Phelps, who used his own experience with adversity to help others, you can look beyond your own needs and be a source of support for others. That is what makes a community. And it doesn't only happen on a large scale. These connections can happen in the most basic level and still be meaningful. The ability to empathize with others and to reach out a hand goes far. Another distinguished visitor to our campus this year, the presidential historian Doris Kearns Goodwin, quotes Eleanor Roosevelt in her latest book, Leadership in Turbulent Times. As a young girl, Goodwin writes, Mrs. Roosevelt wrote in an essay at school, the surest way to be happy is to seek happiness for others. These qualities were, says Goodwin, ambition, resilience, and a sense of moral purpose that helped individuals to become great leaders. Her book shows that each of the presidents that she spoke of, Abraham Lincoln, Theodore Roosevelt, Franklin Roosevelt, Lyndon Johnson, not only worked through great personal adversity, but also learned from it, emerging as more empathetic leaders who were driven to reach out to others. Essentially, 
to seek happiness for others, to quote Mrs. Roosevelt. Essentially, that's what it's all about. You're all now equipped with new skills, new credentials, and hopefully a better understanding of the world around you. And so I invite you to take those skills and to help seek happiness for others. During challenging times, I will share with you that when folks seem to spend more time talking at one another instead of to each other, don't forget to listen and use your empathy to make the world easier for another person. And even though today is all about you, remember to always look for opportunities to give of yourself. Each one of us, moved by a spirit to serve, is capable of making a difference. And so I end with how I always end my remarks with a story. And it's the story that my colleagues behind me have heard before of the snowflake in which a field mouse asked a wise old owl, what is the weight of a snowflake? Why, nothing more than nothing, answered the owl. The mouse went on to tell the owl about the time he sat on a branch and counted each snowflake until the number was exactly 3,471,952. Then, with the settling of the very next snowflake, crack, the branch suddenly snapped, tumbling the mouse and the snow to the ground. Hmm, such was the weight of nothing, said the mouse. So the next time you think your contributions, your acts of charity, your works of justice, your gifts of love, and your intentional kindness are nothing, think again. They all add up, allowing great things to happen. So find something or someone in need of what you can offer. I invite you to look for the pony. And so with that, please remember Southern, please come to visit, know that we are proud of you, and congratulations. Thank you, President Bertolino. <coughs> now, we are at the moment that you all are waiting for to get to feel the diploma. We'll start with um, conferring and awarding of Doctor of Education in Nursing. Will Dean Sandra Bulmer please come forward to present the candidates from the School of Health and Human Services for the Doctor of Education in Nursing Education. Will the candidates for the Doctor of Education in Nursing Education from the School of Health and Human Services please stand. Will the marshal please lead the candidates to the stage to be invested with the hood of their degree and receive their diploma? We ask you to please hold your applause until all degrees are presented. Dr. Barbara Piscopo, Department of Nursing. Kimberly Cardosa Macario, Generational Differences in Nursing Students' Perceptions of Faculty Caring and Presence in Online RMBSN Programs.
Dr. Mary Ellen Doherty. Amy Marshall. Faculty perspectives regarding virtual reality computer-based simulation. Our Doctor of Nursing candidates can remain standing. President Bertolino, it is my pleasure to, re to, as Dean of the School of Health and Human Services, to present these candidates for the Doctor of Education in Nursing Education. By the power vested in me by the Board of Regents, I, as President of Southern Connecticut State University, hereby confer upon you the Doctor of Education in Nursing Education. Congratulations. Well, the candidates for the Master of Science in Nursing, Master of Science in Communication Disorders, Exercise Science, Recreation and Leisure Studies, School Health Education, Sport and Entertainment Management, Master of Marriage and Family Therapy, Master of Public Health, and Master of Social Work degrees, <laughs> and Post Masters Family Nurse Practitioner Certificate, please stand. Will the marshal please lead the advisor and the candidates to the stage to be invested with the hood of their degree and to receive their diploma. Once again, we ask you to please withhold your applause until all degrees are presented. Dr. Cynthia O'Sullivan, Department of Nursing. Josie Cardosa. Neithu Matthew. Anna Mota. Jennifer Wilcox. Jin Sha Peng. <laughs> Ashley Risden. <laughs> Stephanie Mahalas. <laughs> Dr. Christy Maynard. Barbara Spramilo. Dr. Mary Ann Glendon. Dahlia Williams Jarrett. Dr. Mary Purdy, Department of Communication Disorders. Monica Alexandra.
Kristen Carino. Teresa Con Conlin. Nicole Daly. Giovanna Diana. Hayley Gustafson. Emily Hamill. Olivia Jones. Anne Calfayan. Helen Kilby. Laura Kozoin. Desmond Ma. Teresa Maratta. Victoria Marino. Paige McCormick. Kaylee Menders. Rebecca Morrill. Caitlin Nickerson. Kenya Unquo. Erin Palmquist. Kaylee Podolak. John Roth. Stephanie Russo. Julia Ciano. Dan Schultz. Rebecca Shea. Olivia Sousa. Erin Samansky. Courtney Wettenstein. Dr. Jennifer McCullough, Department of Communication Disorders. Alison Clark. Hannah Magliano. Dr. Robert Axtell, Department of Exercise Science. Abigail Berico. Nasser Amara. Dr. William Lunn, Department of Exercise Science. Laura Mangon. Dr. Bonnie Edmondson, School Health Education. Diana Digange. Christine Monk. Doris Marino, School Health Education. Abdullala Albrahim.
Dr. Julie Liefeld, Department of Marriage and Family Therapy. Laura Pisano. Vivek Patel. Sheila Hebert. Damien Parker. Krista Rogerson. Alison Golfis. Katrina Siana. Dr. Rebecca Harvey, Department of Marriage and Family Therapy. Shannon Barner. Melissa Feely. Patty Ginataisio. Stacy Gola Simeone. Amen Naya Phillips. Miss Amanda Kedzior Hooding. Adela Bayrak Tarera Vish. Crystal Beaujour. James Fields. Shanae Ladson Varnell. Crystal Mitchell. Jennifer Rocha. Christine Silva. Mr. Paul Levertino, Department of Marriage and Family Therapy. Ednali Ayala. Corey Larkin. Rosalie Coriolin. Palmyra Lavasser. Alexis Wheeler. Brian Reeves. Dr. Deborah Flynn, Department of Public Health. David Burnside, U.S. Navy veteran, 1985. Crystal Medley. Amanda Tello. Olivia Chamberlain. Dr. Marion Evans. Shorma Van Nick. Rose Ricky. Aubrey Roscoe. <laughs> Dr. Stanley Bernard, Department of Public Health. Caitlin Dakis.
Jasmine Jakobsik. Dr. Peggy Gallup, Department of Public Health. Ayanna Fairweather. Kara Reinecki. Dr. Jean Brenny, Department of Public Health. Bianca Flowers. Dr. Victoria Zygmunt, Department of Public Health. Tess Goldson. Peter Zapata. Monique Rochester. Ali Marek. Adrian Paulson. Dr. Christine Unson, Department of Public Health. Emmanuel Ihakazu. <laughs> Stephanie Romanowski. <laughs> Mohammed Said. Dr. Radhika Patel. Dr. Alkia LaMonica, Department of Public Health. Sherry Van Lang. Dr. Lee DeLisle, Department of Recreation and Leisure Studies. Bethany Kulona. Graham Musin. Jairik Ellaby. Dr. Mary Jo Archambault, Department of Recreation and Leisure Studies. Ashley Thierry. Edward Oliver. Dr. Kevin McGuinness, Department of Sport and Entertainment Management. Woo! Rebecca Mary Bell Gonzalez. Oh Susan Kizawi. Yeah. Jennifer McCarthy. Yeah. James Steinbrick. Gregory Zulo. Dr. Jak Rockfell, Department of Social Work. Lillian Pagan Montanez. And accepting for Mark Adams. <laughs> Kathleen Callahan. <laughs> Sharon Tebow. <laughs> David Musato. Natasha Kelly. Wow. 
Michelle McDowell. Devin Gallipoli. Elizabeth Lobotsky. Carrie Phillips. Logan Jackson. Sky Orozetti. Bunny Rodriguez. Erica Warren. Alexis Greenwood. Dr. Carmela Smith, Department of Social Work. Lauren Wanaki. Alexandra Anderson. Lauren Woods. Dorian Williams. Cassandra Reyes. Dr. Laurie Gardella. Melissa Blackwell. Erin Greenleaf. Cameron Hotchkiss. Kelsey Lordano. Ariana Mora. Erica L. Taylor. Christopher Valosillo. Dr. Shirel Bellamy, Department of Social Work. Omara Madeira. Imani Petgrave. Jean Rice. Kiana Riddick. Christine Zangrillo. Jennifer Sirorali. Dr. Elizabeth Councilman Carpenter, Department of Social Work. Jessica Bialecki. Nicole Ann Bro. Diane Carnero. Carly Kissel. Mariah Mary Mar Lamayi. Melissa Paternosta. Yeah. 
Dr. Jack Jacino, Department of Social Work. Jessica Aliota. Amanda Bashman. Sarah Elliott Stowe. Anne Janes. Francesca Wedderburn. Dr. Joanne Jennings, Department of Social Work. Sarah Cusolo. Haley Glad. Tori Hoover. Miranda McAllister. Courtney Murphy. Jordan Panicali. Lindsay Smuchinski. Lauren Solkowitz. Dr. Kyle O'Brien, Department of Social Work. Megan Wood. Taylor Collins. Jessica Halmeck. Timothy Rowe. Matthew Stanowitz. Olivia Trovarelli. Dr. Mary Acri, Department of Social Work. Carly Jakes. Stephanie LeBlanc. Sarah Lewis Stowe. Jenny Tansky. Brianna Thompson. Dr. Todd Rofuff, Department of Social Work. Kelly Clark. <laughs> Kerry Haynes. <laughs> Brian Hickey. Catherine Saunders. Jacqueline Shaw. Daniel Varley. Rachel Zuckerman. Mokia Hull. Dr. William Rowe, Department of Social Work. Lynette Grace. Ariella Laskin. Kayla Lucianu.
Cassandra Rivera. Jake Signor. Dr. Dana Schneider, Department of Social Work. Michelle Gades. Judith Cullen. Nadine Ruff. Melissa Warner. Jill Critella, Department of Social Work. Carolyn Hart Malouf. Amber Hunter. And Maribel Oyola. Will the candidates for the Master of Science in Nursing, Master of Science in Communication Disorders, Exercise Science, Recreation and Leisure Studies, School Health Education, Sport and Entertainment Management, Master of Marriage and Family Therapy, Master of Public Health, Master of Social Work Degrees, and Post-Master Family Nurse Practitioner Certificate, please stand. President Bertolino, it is my pleasure as Dean of the School of Health and Human Services to present these candidates for their degrees and certificates. Are you ready? By the power vested in me by the Board of Regents, I as President of Southern Connecticut State University hereby confer upon you the Master of Science in Nursing, Communication Disorders, Exercise Science, Recreation and Leisure Studies, School Health Education, Sport and Entertainment Management, Master of Marriage and Family Therapy, Master of Public Health, and Master of Social Work Degrees and Post-Master's Family Nurse Practitioner Certificate, you are graduated. So what a moment. <laughs> and we're not done yet. May I please ask Dean Bruce Cock. Will Dean Bruce Cock please come forward to present the candidates for School of Arts and Sciences for their graduate degree. Well, the candidates for Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, and Master of Science degrees. Please stand. <laughs> Will the marshals please lead the advisor and the candidates to the stage to be invested with the hood of, of their degree and to receive their diploma. Please withhold your applause until all degrees are presented.
Professor Elliot Horch, Frederick Hahn, Dr. Elena Schmidt, Morgan Nivola, Megan Condon, Phyllis Iqbal, Sara Ghazi, Crystal Contreras McNeil, Anastasia Ugolik, Themis Balsamus. Abdul Abusini, Pedro Bermudez, Sandra Goncalves. Yvonne Baldi, Dr. Megan Barboza, Nawal Jahurzi, Dr. Rachel Jeffrey, Paul Gabriel. Nicole Lamparelli, Elizabeth Nash, Dr. Sean Grace, Gabriella Zapretta. Mary Mutais, Michael Ordazzo, Dr. Todd Ryder, Asakta Shafter. Maria Tovar, Julia Harrison, Michaela McLaughlin, Eric Zandarego. Dr. Amal Abdel Rauf, Vitali Bayar, Dr. Herv Podnar, Fisnik Demiri. Dr. Lisa Lancor, <laughs> Netra Devi Nagraj, <laughs> Dr. Joel Dodson, Laura Obringer.
Ashley Mora Davis. Alexander Spicer. Rachel Fury. Cole Depew. Natalie Schriefer. Dr. Marie McDaniel. Kevin Blakely. Dr. Michelle Thompson, history. Matthew Robert Benito. Dr. Christine Petto, History. Shelby Hollingsworth. Robert Kirkpatrick. Dr. Jennifer Hopper, Political Science. Margaret Candidate Ern Pendragon. Michael McDonald, Math. Dr. Cheryl Derwin, Psychology. Brianna Charlusi. Jalexis Watkins, Psychology. Kristen Sweeney, veteran, United States Coast Guard, 1995 to 2018. <laughs> Dr. Patricia Calba, psychology. Melanie DeFrank. Dr. Julia Irwin, Psychology. Zakal Al Abdallah. Woo! Ashley Campbell. Woo! Annie Capobianco. Alyssa Lato. Veronica Maciel. <laughs> Tiffany Mumford. <laughs> Mary Beth Pamias. Shana Simonson. <laughs> Selena Tamavangsa. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Kenty Drain, Sociology. Margarita Alvarez. Zachary Fox. Joshua Henton. Kevin Russo, U.S. Navy veteran.
Miranda Martinez. Valerie Vance, U.S. Navy veteran. <laughs> Kalila Waite. <laughs> Dr. Tricia Lynn, Women's Studies. Allegra. It's Soga. Dr. Rosalind Amenta, Women's Studies. Vanessa Parker. Judith Van Bikides. Will the candidates for the Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, and Master of Science degrees please stand? President Bertolino, it is my pleasure as Dean of the School of Arts and Sciences to present these candidates for the Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, and Master of Science degrees. Are you ready? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. By the power vested in me by the Board of Regents, I, as President of Southern Connecticut State University, hereby confer upon you the Master of Fine Arts, Master of Arts, and Master of Science degrees. You are graduated. Congratulations. Would all graduates please stand? This is your moment. Let's all join in a round of a very powerful, thunderous applause to congratulate our graduates. Let the world hear that here comes the new wave of leadership and talent to make our world more beautiful and our future more promising. Congratulations. Please be seated. Congratulations as you are ready to spread your wings and soar high. We want you to know you've got, you really have got what it takes. And we are so proud, so proud to see you go forth as our ambassadors to the world and as the torch bearers of our legacy. We feel grateful to all of you for choosing us as your partners along this journey. We hope you will continue to cherish our bond and wish you the very best in your professional and personal lives. May you flourish, may you be prosperous, 
May you stay healthy and spread joy, peace, and love wherever you go. May this world embrace you and may you earn their love and respect. You have our best wishes. Thank you. One very important thing, because it's about continuation of our bonds. I would like now to welcome our Associate Vice President for Alumni and Donor Engagement, Judith Vemakiris, to provide greetings and congratulations to the class of 2019. Ms. Vemakiris is an alumna of Southern, a first-generation college student, and we are so very proud to have her as a wonderful member of our Southern family and the team here that serves you. Here is to Ms. Judith Van Verkuyt. Thank you, Dean Singh. Before I go any further, congratulations to my fellow graduates. You should all be very proud of your accomplishments and most certainly your hard work that came with many, many sacrifices and late nights. I'm here today in a dual role as both a 2019 graduate and as the Associate Vice President for Alumni and Donor Engagement. Like many of you, my journey here today and back to Southern has been filled with detours, challenges, and triumphs. Like many of our current undergraduate students, and maybe even many of you, I am the first in my family to go to college. My, my parents, immigrants from Portugal, like so many do, came for the American dream. They worked hard to make a better life for my brother and I. Education was non-negotiable in our home, and when the time came for, co for college, Southern welcomed me with a full scholarship to the Honors College, which made college a reality instead of a possibility. My undergraduate years were filled with many of the traditional college memories. I even met my husband, a New Haven High School teacher here, and now we're raising two boys. Southern gave me so much personally and professionally, including a start in my career. When I started out in the alumni office, as a 22-year-old, I had no clue what that journey would be, but it would be a journey that would lead me back to Southern two more times in a professional capacity, most recently in my current position. The journey to my master's was not any different, and despite a few stops to raise a family and build my career, I stand with you today. I thank all the faculty and staff who helped me complete my master's degree in women's studies. And while this is my story, I know there are so many more stories that all of you in this room have to share. And this is where I transition roles. As the Associate Vice President of Alumni and Donor Engagement, I ask you to share your stories with me, our staff, our fellow alumni, and most importantly, the students who will sit in your seats one day. I know the value that all of you can continue to have on our Southern community and students, whether graduate or undergraduate. Your status as graduate alumni, although I suspect there are also many dual graduates here, is no less because your experience may be different than that of your undergraduate peers. We invite you to return to Southern often and share your professional experiences. Your academic programs will continue to educate future leaders in your professions, and your, your experience will continue to be valued by those students. Consider coming back for Alumni Professionals Day. Consider joining our Alumni Association Board of Directors, visiting the Alumni House on Farnham, Farnham Avenue, or attending our next event, a Red Sox versus Yankees game. Please keep in touch with the alumni office, your faculty members, and your academic programs, and be sure to wear your Southern swag. Welcome to the SCSU Alumni Association. Once an owl, always an owl. Thank you. Thank you, Judith. It's now time to introduce you to our very own Candice Norday, who will sing the Southern Connecticut State University's alma mater. She will be accompanied by Professor Marcus, Mark Cuss on organ. Congrats, Natalie, wherever you are. So I know y'all are really excited. Congrats on like graduating and being smart and stuff. 
But this is not to humor me, this is also to humor President Joe. It's the alma mater, it's in your program if you have one, the lyrics are there. I don't know if you're supposed to stand, oh, are we standing? Oh, we're standing. Yep, we're standing. Up. The There's choreography to this, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's a sing-along. Lyrics. Ready? Like an owl that's meant to soar, our minds will rise forever to the heaven of knowing. Teachers strive to guide all students to their heights in hope ambitions keep growing. Alma mater, wise and strong, give us strength to care. Congrats, everyone. Okay, that's great. Okay, as commencement marshal, I bring to a close the 2019 graduate commencement at Southern Connecticut State University. As I call for the recessional, I ask our guests in the audience to remain in their seats until all of the graduates have recessed out of the auditorium. I now call for the recessional. <laughs> 